Four Tenths to Turn Ten Studios and Microsoft Studios presents Forza Motorsport 6 Apex. Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Nas Mashaib Kadiker and you're watching First Impression Let's Play of Forza Motorsport 6 Apex for Windows 10. Hello, uh, how are you doing, guys? Uh, I'm here to let you see the fir my first ex impressions of this game. Uh, this just launched two days ago, and I had a hard time downloading the game, uh, namely because it was two reasons. Uh, it's 19 gigabytes, which is not a problem, but the problem is the Windows Store was unreliable, which made it uh, quite difficult because it would stop and it would error out, and I'd have to restart the download over again. So, if, say after three gigabytes of download. After an error, I had to restart the entire thing. Sometimes it resumed from where it stopped, and sometimes it started over again. So there was a lot of wasted bandwidth and time. So I decided to give up on it, and then I tried it yesterday, uh, today morning, and it worked. So there you go. You're watching me start up the game for the third time. Now, why do I say third time? First, I actually decided to start this game, and I played it. It was pretty nice. I love the intro. I can't manage to replay the intro for some reason. If I could, I would have showed it to you, but um. The second time I did my first recording, I used the NVIDIA Shadow Play feature to record the game. <coughs> uh, sorry for the cough. I inv used NVIDIA Shadow pay Play to record the game, and apparently I, I should have tested this first, but uh, uh, that thing, the Shadow Play, I guess, is not compatible with this game, and all I got was a black screen and my voice, so. Uh, sorry, and I wasted like 20 minutes uh, with that, and I'm so sorry uh, because I had some nice things to say, and it was nice, a nice first impression that I can't show you anymore because it's gonna be my third impression. But anyway, let's get started. Press enter to begin. Now, there's some settings I changed. If I go to options and video, and this is low by default, but the resolution was 1366 by 768. I want to set it to 1920 by 1080. I don't know why it got set because I think I clicked restore defaults. Okay, yes. Yes, now much better. Uh, 1360, uh, 1920 by 1080, much better. And however, the, uh, this is really cool. Dynamic optimization. Uh, this actually it says uh, dynamic optimization. Uh, adjust vir visual settings dynamically to maximize performance for any given game gameplay scenario. So this will adjust the, v <coughs> uh, the settings as you go. Uh, it's like I guess if there's more things in the screen, it'll show lower details to keep our frame rates high. This is amazing. <coughs> I think all games should have it because now you don't have to worry about maintaining a frame rate and turning things up and down because at some point you want when there's less things on the screen, you want better details because your graphics card can handle it. But you also want a con consistent frame rate, and I think this is awesome. And uh, I, 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 I'm glad that this is amazing. I think every game should have it. However, you do have the option for custom. Now, when you click custom, you have more granular control. If you want the granular control, and if you would say if you have a really high-end graphics card, you could always set it to high and change the frame rate: 30 frames per second, uh, 60 frames per second. Um, and you could always set all these stuff like high, medium, ultra. And some of them has ultra. There's atmosphere, uh, atmospheric filtering and anti-aliasing options, and that is uh, really cool. I mean, I, but everything is set to dynamic. Uh, this makes my life easier. This makes more normal, casual users' life easier. They don't have to think about it. I think this is a benefit of them working on console for years. So as console, as you know, it could. It adjusts dynamically, so if uh, to maintain frame rates in consoles, they might actually reduce resolution to 900p in the Xbox One. Um, in many cases, PS4 is a little more powerful. I think it does it a little less often, but uh, yeah. So um, I'm gonna actually hit no because I think I already set to 1920 by 1080. Yes. Okay. So audio, I kept how it was. Changed the setting to high. It was set at medium before. No problems there. Uh, input options. This is cool. Um, for keyboard, by default it was WASD drive. Uh, I don't like WASD controls. There, I'm not good at driving the, with my left hand. I like WASD control for first-person shooter games, uh, but not driving. I've been using the arrow keys since I was a kid, maybe seven or eight years old. My first game was a Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2 on the PC or Windows. 
and uh, I've been using arrow keys ever since, so I need to drive arrow keys. And this is awesome because in many games, in Need for Speed especially, I have to manually change these to a forward arrow, left arrow, down arrow. But they have presets built in, so you don't have to worry about doing this. Like, I thought I was gonna have to spend like t a lot of time changing it to how I wanted, but thank God they have a preset here, right? Arrow drive one, so that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna cancel it. Yes, and there's credits and heads up display options. So there you go. What does help do? Okay, it doesn't take you to the browser. Thank you for not doing that. Most software now takes you to the browser when you click help. They don't have built-in help anymore because the web is better. Always been always been better at finding. Okay, so so yeah, free play and the tours is where it started. So uh, when I first started, I had that really awesome movie, a, hu a human uh, film movie, like it was a real movie, and I can't seem to play it anymore. And it had a tutorial race, and I can't play that race either. And uh, after that, I decided to start recording, and I did my first recording here, Pony Car. Um, and this is the first race I did, which didn't get recorded, and I finished, I passed it. I did not finish with that first, but I finished fifth, I believe. And uh, But I re then I realized the recording was m destroyed, so there's that. So uh, I'm gonna, I guess I could do this race again, because I'll try to improve my score and see if I could get first. So or I might do it worse, so that would be embarrassing, but let's do it anyway. How about that? Pony Car, an American icon, born in the 1960s to appeal to a younger, more energetic generation, their sporty lines embody a sense of freedom, independence, style, and performance. As sales of Pony Car skyrocketed, U.S. automakers began to offer race-ready models, purpose-built to defeat each other's offerings on the racing circuit. With powerful V8 engines under the hood and race-tuned suspensions, these fierce competitors battled it out for the latter half of the decade on circuits across America. Yeah, USA, America, baby. USA, USA. Let's select this car type. I changed the color here too. I liked this car really. Um, I also, the they don't play intro anymore. The, there's a British guy. I think. Now the intro option is not there, I guess, unfortunately. But there's a British guy that talks about this. It's pretty nice. Um, but I checked, changed the color here to the blue. The race will be at Sebring International Raceway, originally created as a U.S. Air Force training base. USA, USA. Okay, great. It's loading. I think there's a loading sign right there. Also, uh, if you notice in the intro right there, uh, there's a. They had like the engine and this, uh, it had a steam logo. It was really cool. It wasn't a steam logo, it was an actual st uh, engine uh, gear, but you could see some frame rate drops here, unfortunately. But I, uh, the frame rate drop goes away when you start the race, or at least I don't notice it. So I guess it's okay. St starting grid. Okay, I'm, I'm on the 12th place. Good enough. Start race. Let's get started. They said I have to get sixth or more to pass when I first started this. Now, this is not the default view when you first get it. Uh, you ha your, the, your default view, which you could change by pressing tab, uh, is this. It's, I mean, you could change your view, and it's awesome to see the cockpit view, as they call it. However, it just takes away too much off the real estate for me, so I don't like it. Uh, not because I don't like this view, if I had a 27 inch 4K monitor, maybe I could have gone with this, but uh, it just takes way too much space and I can barely see anything, so I'm gonna switch. But I love how you change the gear, or it's an automatic, but these cars are always manual, but if you set it to automatic, the driver's gonna change the gear for you, so you don't have to worry about that. So. So I'm gonna change the view to this, the hood view, much better, and I could race much better. This is how I race, and this is how I like it. And now I say in real life, this is how you see actually, because your most of your vision or your most of your focus is on the on the windshield, and 
you don't notice your uh, dashboard. So, uh, and by by playing it on a playing it on a monitor, you're already reducing the field of view. You don't have the full field of view when you as you when you as you do when you drive in real life. And co compound that with the cockpit view, and you have a really narrow field of view, which is barely unplayable for me. So I switched to this view, and it's much better. Crap! Someone pushed me. And uh, I really like the rewind feature of this game, which I I will try not to use because. I don't think it's cheating, but I guess I, I like to challenge myself and try not to crash as much. So I have to be six to at least pass the event. I think passing means you unlock the next next event, but I already did that, so I guess I have no obligation except to beat my previous record. Oh crap, see that's what I mean. Press R to reverse. Once you get on the grass, you really slow down. It's really hard to accelerate. Let's do that. Nope, I should have gone more further back. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah. That's good enough. So, this is the first. This is not a full Let's, let's Play or a review of this game. It's just a first impression, or as I had said, my third impression. Because unfortunately, the last recording was all botched up. Now, this game's running pretty good on this uh, graphics card of mine. My PC is not... Uh, I'm happy with my processor and other stuff. I have a mid-range graphics card here. I uh, got this PC with a G G uh, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 745 with a 4GB of DDR3 RAM. Um, now, don't confuse this with a GT uh, uh, NVIDIA GeForce GT740. This is actually closer to the GTX 750 than the GT740. And why I say that is because this uses the Maxwell architecture, the, the same architecture used by the G GeForce GTX 980 and 970 and the Titan 980 Ti as well. Uh, whereas the older, G uh, or, or as the 700 series, like the GeForce GT, uh, GT, uh, GT uh, 7, uh, 740 and lower, and also the 760, 780, and 770, uh, they use uh, the older architecture, the Kepler architecture. The GTX 750 and 745 were the first to use the Maxwell art architecture. And I, I, I think that's good. Uh, it's not. It's actually pretty good, decent. I haven't had any problems playing games on this card. Actually, it's so. I think it's the 45. When they hear 45, they think of it as. GT 740, which is not which is not designed for gaming, but this is actually this card is actually designed for gaming. The GTX, is, remember, note that this is a GTX 740, not a GT 745. So it's a GT GTX 745. So it's okay. I mean, this game runs good. I mean, you see some frame drops, and that's annoying, but um, uh. But yeah, it's okay, it's playable. I mean, every game I threw at it so far is playable. I haven't had issues yet. Although I don't play very demanding games. But I will as I... I guess as I play more games, and for this channel, I'll, I'll have to play more newer and more demanding games. And that, after, at which point, I might have to look into getting a better graphics card. But I think this will do for now. Although, I feel bad for people who spent $1,000 last, last week or last month for a Titan. Titan X because NVIDIA announced yesterday night their latest in their graphics card architecture the Pascal architecture and with it the GTX 1080 and the 1070 which actually beats out the GTX or GTX 980 two GTX 980 with SLI it beats out that and uh, it also beats out GeForce Titan X with uh, in VR, and this is amazing. So because this uh, the Titan X cost a thousand dollars, which I find, which I personally personally find unjustifiable to pay a thousand dollars for a graphics card alone. That is just a. Uh, I mean, I, I get the appeal and I get the need for it sometimes, but for me personally, uh, it's not worth the price. But when you bring the 1080. Which costs uh, 550, I believe, 500, 550 US dollars, or 
uh, 1070, which costs 350 US dollars. And now we're talking because now we get performance better than 980, 2980 with SLI, and sometimes better performance than Titan X, which costs costs thousand dollars. And now we have a mainstream price, mainstream card, or closer to a mainstream card that can play VR really well and has really good performance and that is exciting even if you don't want to get the 1080 it's a new architecture it's more power, power efficient and you could get more bang for the buck and so I can't wait to see when they add, uh, create more variants like a 1050 1060 1040 uh, and those will also be really really better uh, there you go I think I finished third let's just uh, easy frame rate just frame rate drop here but yes, so those cards will definitely be mainstream cards for more people and at a lower price and it'll have good performance. I would be I wouldn't be surprised even if the 1060, 1050 can play VR games because of the efficiency in made in the new architecture. So yes, so so I got last time I only got play six or better. Now I got third to or perfect pass. I haven't gotten that yet, I'll have to try harder. I'm still getting used to the Forge of Feel because, and since I was a seven or eight years old, the only racing game I've been playing is Need for Speed series. Uh, I've been my first game was Need for Speed uh, Two uh, for Windows, and uh, I have been playing Need for Speed since. So it's, it's it, I'm not comparing one or the other yet. I like them both because Forza is more like a simulating a real race and car, and I like there's something I like about that. It's more it's more relaxing for me, less hectic, and I love that feel. Uh, whereas Need for Speed is more arcade, and I love that arcade style too. And they, they have they have both place in my, they both have play a place in my heart. And uh, I, I but I haven't played Forza uh, as much because uh, they haven't been on PC. And I did play s some Forza demos on the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One. I have, uh, yeah. So I played the demos and I played a little bit of at my friend's house, friend's place, and I like Forza. And this, uh, this is actually my first game that I own, a full Forza game that I own, and it's on the PC. So I'll, it's, it's. So I might actually, as I get, hang, get, I get the hang of the feel of this game, get accustomed to the feel of this Forza style, Forza feel. I'll probably do better. So now, right now, because I'm more used to Need for Speed, I'll have, I'm not as good in Forza yet. But as we play, it won't get better. So it takes, takes practice. So there we go, Forza. So I'll exit it here. I could have clicked continue actually. If you love cars, this is where it all starts. In the empty parking areas and on the city streets where you race your mates between stoplights. We do this in the very first cars we owned, or the ones we saved up for later. We're talking about affordable heroes. Cars that bring performance to the people. Whether they're smoking around a patch of waste ground or hammering along a city circuit you designed yourself. They aren't the most expensive and they won't win every drag race, but they all prove one thing. You don't need a million dollars to have a car with a big heart. Okay guys, so this I like the look of this car much better. I'm more of a fan of a rounded car, so what color should I pick? This looks less premium than this. This looks more premium, but but I I, I don't mind the I don't mind this also looks not bad, but this looks more like a home car. Like peop you buy for regular use. You don't buy these exact exotic color as often. Actually maybe you do buy the red, but I, I like the red here, so I'm gonna go with that. Saving. Please do not turn off the app or the devi device. It doesn't say turn off your console, like it usually says. Your second event takes place in the rain at Brands Hatch. Oh, nice, on a wet nice track rain track. 
Rain's crap texture. Tires grip more easily during cornering, braking distances are longer, and deep puddles accumulate, causing a risk of hydroplane. Okay. Glad to know. Forza Motorsport is a realistic simulation that features several assists to make driving approachable for everyone. In the assists menu, you can adjust these settings to experience the full depth of this simulation or to achieve certain bonus objectives. You can modify any of the assist settings to tailor your driving experience to be just the way you like or to meet bonus objectives. Removing driving assists will require you to exercise greater control of your car but it will also increase your race point score. Okay, so just tested out all this. These are amazing granular control actually. That is good. I like it. Um, I'll, I'll get back to this when I get more experienced in this game, but manual with clutch? That's good. And it actually simulates fuel. That is good. That is amazing. Okay. So let's go back. Let's start the race. Powered by Drivatar technology. Each driver is as unique and competitive as the players who train them. Great. Go, three, two, one, go. I, when I was a kid, I used to love to say, three, two, one, go, because I actually like to mimic the guy in Need for Speed, who's in Need for Speed 2, where they said, three, two, one, go, I love that. And I guess my uncle used to make fun of me when I said that, because I looked, I guess I looked doofus. Goofus. Not goofus, I looked goofy. Yeah, why am I s I'm turning the word goofy into doofus. No, no one called me doofus when I was a kid. Crap. Okay, I need to definitely get used to the rain. Now I'm in last place. I could have used the rewind feature, but I'm not. When I hit a car, it sounds like a, I'm slapping like, like a bread or meat on the counter, like tut, rather than crash or kabam. You could hear some good glass shattering. I love the rain noise. I'm actually just, I'm actually just disable music actually. Because I like the rain noise, so... Uh, no, not HUD. Heads up display. I need to go audio. I'm gonna turn in-game music off. Good. No, I did not apply the settings, unfortunately. Except... Yes, because I wanted to hear the rain sounds. Oh, that's so much better. I love this sound. So much nicer. Nope. Okay. Let's see how the indoor sound like, so... I'll get more of the rain when you're outside. <laughs> you could actually hear the uh, rain hitting your windshield. 
That is beautiful. That is beautiful. I love the sound of rain. It just makes me want to cuddle up in a bed and just sleep. And because there's a windshield wiper. Very nice. By the way, I love the puddle splash sound that makes that sound that makes when you go through the puzzle. That is amazing. Also, love the way the car parked. I could have done better, but I was actually messing around on my keyboard, taking some screenshots. And the reason I turned my mic off is it because I want to hear the nice sound of rain and just relax with the sound of driving. Okay, this is the end. Thank you for watching, guys.